Welcome to the Women's Football Show here on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. It's the last one before we go into the new year. Ali, I'm Kerry Pollock. We're joined here today with Stenhouse Muir centre forward, Eva Ralston. Eva, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Let's look at your season so far. How would you say it's going? It's going well. Um, I think we've started kind of as we intended to. Hopefully another couple of wins on the board and um, we'll come back from the new year and we should be fighting for promotion, so that's the plan. Yeah, and you got into football a little bit later, am I right, in saying about 16, 17? Yeah, about that kind of later uh, years in school, um, but I always enjoyed playing at school and then the opportunity came up to go out to Stenhouse Muir and went to training session and I loved it, so yeah, I'm still there now. Yeah, and who was it that got you into the sport in the first place? Probably my brother. I always played, we're quite a sporty family, so I always played kind of in the garden in the holidays and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I've always just liked sport in general, so from there and then into school and then just where I am now, so yeah. Enjoying it. Do you have any heroes growing up? <sighs> a couple of my Celtic fans, so yeah, yeah like Henrik Larsson and things yeah. like that, I always loved watching. But yeah, probably just the main ones, your usual ones, to be honest. Yeah. So how do you feel your season going personally? I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm back enjoying playing. I was away last year for uni, so I took a year out and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do when I came back. So just went back to Stenhouse Muir and now I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm enjoying playing and I'm enjoying kind of playing under the manager and with the group of girls. I think we've got some great players this season, some new ones coming in as well. So personally, I think it's gone well. I think another couple of goals and I think I'll be happy, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. So. Did you get a chance to play when you were over in Spain? Did you play? I did, yeah. So I played, I was in Malaga um, and Stenhouse Muir helped me kind of find a team out there. So I played for Malaga Club um, and I loved it. It was so different, a really different experience. And it was hard, the kind of language barrier. I do speak Spanish, but in, kind of initially, as I gained a bit of confidence in it, um, it was challenging. Mm. But I loved it. Really good to see the kind of difference in terms of like the technical side of the game and the physical side of the game, in terms of like the differences between the two countries. Mm. But yeah, it was a really good like personal experience and allowed me to grow a little bit as well. So playing in more pleasant uh, oh. environmental conditions. That was probably the hardest thought. part, like yeah. the, playing yeah. in, this, in the heat, because mm. obviously. You play one probably one game a season here when it's in nice weather, and that was the hardest part for sure. Like I remember playing maybe forty five minutes, and I honestly couldn't do another half because the physical endurance and dehydration and everything was was really really difficult. But I did kind of get accustomed to it as as the season went on. So, what were the differences with the f facilities wise? Was there a big jump? Did you find? Yeah, I'd probably say we're probably a little bit lucky over here in terms of what we're allowed. I mean, at Steny we play in the stadium week in, week out. Um, and in terms of the other clubs we go to, you get the chance to play, especially in the games like Scottish Cup and things, you get the chance to play in the same uh, the same facilities as the men's teams. And over there, I'd say probably a bit more outdated in terms of the changing rooms and where you're playing. But... Yeah, I'd say we're probably a little bit luckier right. over here, which is was quite surprising to me yeah. as well. So that's surprising. I'll even expect that, would you? Yeah. yeah, I think just when you see that, I think across the last decade, Spain have put so much money and investment resources into yeah. grassroots yeah. women's football. Obviously, the fruits of their labour would be in the, the World Cup success this summer. I think there's been a lot has gone in, but I think a lot tends to have come from from parent male sides who have invested in their yeah. female that's sides. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think it's in terms of probably the higher leagues as well, the kind mm -hmm. of top your La Liga and stuff like that. The money's going in there first mm -hmm. as well initially. Um, but where we were playing, in, it was a South Spain which is a bit more traditional as well in right. general compared to the rest of the country. That was, I'd say the facilities here definitely. We, the chances we get to play week in, week out in different stadiums, whether it be at home or away, or mm. your opportunity is probably a bit, bit better in that sense. What about the ability in terms of the player? How did you find that? They're so much faster, like in terms of the game and the kind of technical ability, much, right. much faster. Um, physica like physical wise, I'd say, like I'm not a physical player at all and I've spoken about this before. I think there was a, my first couple of games, there was things that were so light that the ref was given mm. and I was so confused because I'm not like that at all. Like I'm probably yeah. the least in my team in terms of it. But that was probably the biggest change was one shoulder and the ref was calling yeah. whereas here you'd never get there's things that you'd, you'd get laughed at if you yeah, called shouting uh -huh. for um, but yeah the game was a lot quicker a lot one touch movement and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and one touch passing so yeah that was it was good though it was definitely a personal mm -hmm. um, I developed at a personal level as well from that so I was going to say it made you a better player do you think yeah. and it gave you the opportunity to play with different players like a few of the girls who I, who I was playing with in Spain um, played at like really high levels kind of in the younger days and they obviously brought a lot of experience to the squad so it was nice to see that because I've never I've got the opportunity to do that um, anywhere else. So Are you still in contact with some of those girls? Some yeah, um, it's good. It's it's good for my Spanish as well because I get, yeah. I get a, that was the kind of common ground. But 
yeah, they're do, they're doing well this season as well. So um, hopefully it's double promotion for us. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another big moment for you, Eva, was getting nominated for the Catlin Award for outstanding academic and athletic achievement. How big a moment was that for you to be nominated for that? It was an honour. Yeah, I mean, I was very present, pleasantly surprised. It's um, I think kind of what Cat stood for in terms of her academic ability, in terms of everything that she put into it, and obviously on the pitch as well. Mm -hmm. It was it was lovely to be to be nominated, yeah. Yeah, and obviously you studied law and Spanish. How have you found the balance between your playing and studies and all of that that goes on there? Yeah, it is challenging, but I do like I enjoy a challenge mm -hmm. and I think it keeps it it keeps it exciting, it keeps it fun. Um I think this year's probably the most difficult in terms of my final year and just being able to, like you said, balance everything. It is challenging, but Football gives you a break. I think that's the thing. It's you, c you can't you can't do everything twenty four hours a day. So mm -hmm. for me, football is my break. It's my escape and the couple of hours to go and do something I really really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uni's good. I do enjoy uni. I like learning and I like the kind of social aspect of it as well. So is it sport you want to be involved in as well? It is. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to go into the kind of legal side of it. I think it's quite a it's quite a kind of niche area, but it's very up and coming. Um, and there's lots to it. So I'd like to be involved, whether it be in house for a club or in a kind of sporting organisation, right, yeah. maybe more like the agency side of things. I'd like to go down that kind of legal route. So that's that's the plan. That's the goal. Anyway, yeah. So. Fingers crossed then. Well, let's have a look at the results from the weekend in the SWPL. It was Aberdeen 0, Hibernian 7, Rangers 4, Hamilton Ackies 0, Hearts 1, Celtic 1, Glasgow City 6, uh, Spartans 1, Montrose 1, Dundee United 0 and Motherwell 1. So Glasgow City 6, Partick Thistle 0. It was Ali. A slip up for Celtic? Yeah, hugely. I think uh, I, I do wonder just about the speculation around Fran Alonso and the impact that it's had on, on Celtic, not to take anything away from Eva Olid and, and her side. I think that's a huge result for them, but Celtic will be gutted. That leaves them three points now, mm -hmm. um, trailing Rangers who are still unbeaten, the only unbeaten team in, in the league. And I think they'll see it as, as just a really tough one to take and one to stew on now mm -hmm. uh, before they come back next month. But I thought um, the heart scored very early on, I think after nine minutes or so. And, and obviously earlier in the season, they were 2-0 up and Celtic came back and, and got it to 4-2. Uh, I, I just didn't get the sense yesterday that it was coming, even after Caitlin Hayes levelled things. And there's a fear about the game still to go. I just had the sense that they were going to frustrate Celtic. Um, so interesting to see what happens, obviously huge changes at Celtic last summer in terms of the personnel who came in but whether or not now they're looking for a new manager remains to be seen because I think uh, Fran Alonso had requested just to get through these games before any any decision was made on, on what else was going to come. Obviously there's been substantial interest from across the pond in them. Mm -hmm. Eva, we've been asking everyone that joins us on the Couch Rangers of course are the front runners just now. Do you see them slipping up? Are they the team to beat at the moment? Yeah, I think they'll continue to do so. Yeah, I think they've kind of proved their their stance in the league so yeah I think I think they're the, the ones to watch and they're, yeah. Yeah, they're going to stand as front runners I think they just look like a very consistent team just now they're yeah. very yeah. level uh, I, I think Joe Potter has, has done a fantastic job in a very quick time I think there's a real identity about that team I think she's getting the best out of players she's introduced a lot of young players brought them in from the academy taking them into the first team environment, the, the flurries, to score, score a lot of goals. She was critical of the team yesterday. She thought they were fairly sloppy and, until they got going, but I think she's set a fairly high standard and certainly I think at the minute they look like the team to beat. Yeah, there's definitely there's more football to be played, of course, more old firm games. Will it be one of those games, Ali, that you think that Rangers might fall behind or drop points? I think that I think the, the games between the top three huh. are definitive when it comes to the title. However, they're not exclusive when you see Celtic dropping points to Hearts and Hearts held uh, Glasgow City yeah. two earlier in the season. But by f my own uh, opinion would be that I think the, the games between Celtic Rangers and Glasgow City effectively decide the destination of the title and that will be Celtic's real headache because the, the game against Rangers earlier in the season they just didn't turn up. It was arguably their worst performance under Fran Alonso as he said uh, I, I, they were insipid against Rangers they looked really cowed very very poor performance and they're now three points off the pace so I think the next game will be away too like that, that the first game was yeah. a home one their next one is a Broadwood game I think uh, the pressure is now on Celtic to win it they need to turn up for that one 
uh, and they would need to have a performance it was in contrast to that one that they had in the opener but I think you would expect the front three Glasgow City now have closed the gap on Celtic to five points they were eight points behind mm -hmm. uh, closed the gap to five uh, I think the games between the top three will, will tell you where the title's going well, let's just have a look at the league table then. It's two points separating 4th and 6th and one point separating 9th and 11th. Does that just highlight the competitiveness, Eva, in the league? Yeah, 100%. I think, like you said, the top three, it's always going to be a kind of close competition. But in general, I mean, your likes of Partick Thistle, they've been doing really well this season, mm -hmm. despite the result yesterday. But I think it's, it's a competitive league and always has been, and probably this year more so than ever. So... I think it's a great advert for Scottish women's football. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel there's anybody else like a Partick Thistle or a Hearts that can cause the top three problems? I think, like, uh, probably Thistle's probably the ones who every every week it's, mm. the results are really good and mm. they seem to be doing really well. I think they signed a couple of new players in the summer as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, they're probably the ones I'd say watch out for. Dark yeah. courses. Yeah. Yeah, although there was a tough result for Thistle yesterday. Yeah, a six 0 yeah. Alternative Glasgow uh -huh. Derby. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I think um, I think they've punched above their weight hugely. Mm -hmm. that last season too, they made the top six last season, and I think yesterday's results mean they, they drop into mm -hmm. six spot. But I still think they could make top six, which when you consider the resources they've got, they've not got any full time players at all. I think it's a remarkable yeah. achievement. Even Hibs result yesterday as well, the week, Saturday. Um, Saturday rather as well, a 7 0 win over Aberdeen. And Yori Ann were guests last week, getting yes. a hat trick, Ali. Another hat trick, yes, another one. <laughs> heads back stateside there, of course. course. We'll be yeah. delighted that she go, goes back home with, with another hat trick. Yep. Yeah, I think um, Hibs are finding a wee bit of consistency now. I think it was mm -hmm. a bit stop start at the, the, the opening few months of the season. I think they found a wee bit of consistency. Just, they'll be keen now to keep that mm -hmm. going in the, the second half of the campaign. Yeah, for the bottom half of the table, Eva Hamilton Aki's obviously a 4 0 defeat from Rangers yesterday, how difficult can that be to try and keep the confidence up throughout the games that you're going to come yeah, up against? I think against? not even probably as a team and a personal level for the players as well, it's probably difficult. Um, mm -hmm. It goes back to the whole thing of full-time players and players in full-time contracts and players mm -hmm. who are going to work and going straight to training or being at uni and going straight to training. It's, it's finding that balance and sometimes you just can't compete, but they've definitely got, them in it, got, them, got it in them to keep going and keep fighting and get a couple of points on the table and a few wins before, before the season ends. There's still loads of games to be played, mm -hmm. so it's not over yet for them. Yeah, definitely. Is that what we need to keep in mind, Ali, about the top three as well? That Rangers might not run away with it. Glasgow City are still there, chipping at their heels. Yeah, and I think as well, when you look at the, the points differentials, I think eight points between Rangers and Glasgow City looks like a lot, but at one point... Last term, Celtic were eight points behind Glasgow City and then took the league to the the, the last few minutes mm. of the campaign. I think it is too early to call it. Uh, what I would say is that traditionally in, in recent seasons you've seen a remarkable consistency from the top three. Uh, it, it's you, you have isolated results like Celtic dropping points to Hearts, but by and large it's, it's been decided in the games against one another. And You would have to say your conclusion across the opening few months in the opening half of the season is that Rangers have been the most consistent mm -hmm. team. Well, it's whether or not they sustain that those levels and sustain that going into the second half. If so, then I think they would go on and, and, and reclaim the title. What does that say about the squad that's there then? And Joe Potter, obviously she wasn't there last season, but to lose the title at Ibrox on the last kick of the ball, basically, the, then to come round this season and find themselves three points clear of Celtic. What does that say about them? Yeah, I think, uh, I think she's done fantastically well. I think... Um, there's a very clear style about how she wants them to play. I think uh, she she was clear about that in the early interviews that, that we spoke to her with, uh, and, and I think very clear to the players about what what she wanted, and very clear about saying if there are mistakes as we're going along here, that's fine. I'll accept it because this is the style that I want you to play in, and I think what you're seeing is a level of one understanding that the players have all bought into it and two there's a confidence now within that side that had been ripped apart a wee bit last time but that comes from winning games if you're winning games you have the belief you have the confidence when you see that a system's working you buy into it and I think uh, yeah I think that's what you're seeing from Rangers at the minute. Do you like to play under that sort of rule ever when the manager says just try and do it go for a bit of freedom it's fine? Yeah I think it's important that the manager probably takes responsibility for it as well Um I think it's important that you trust them and they trust you. So if they're giving you the freedom and the kind of flexibility to do that, then it shows mm -hmm. that they believe in you as a player. So, yeah, yeah I, I like as a player, I like it. I like that they probably have the trust and the confidence in you to, to go and do it. At the same time, if it does go wrong, then it's yeah. who's responsible. But that's part and parcel of football, I suppose, and that's yeah. what's happening at Rangers now. They're, it's worked for them, so hopefully it continues. What's not clicking at Celtic just now, Ali? What do you feel is not working just now? 
To be fair, I don't think there's much wrong. Um, I, I think it was a poor result. I thought it was a poor performance. There's a lot of players out sick. Um, we had players who had been ill, players who had been sick. You maybe just saw that there's not a great deal of depth in the squad when you're missing key players. I think um, I think Celtic have scored more goals than any other team in the league. I think it's been fairly fluent when you consider he essentially had to rip a team apart and put it back together again. I don't think there's been a massive amount wrong. They'll be disappointed with yesterday's performance. I think the bigger question now is whether or not they keep the manager. Mm -hmm. I think, and you just wonder when there is a a bit of, of speculation around his position, you do wonder sometimes it can be quite unsettling in players, if that's maybe an aspect about yesterday. But I think missing missing key players and not having a lot of depth was probably a, a huge part of it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Will they keep the manager? I, 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 can't tell, I've, I, I can't tell you. I know he, he's a wanted man. He's, yeah. he, he's wanted um, uh, by Monterey and by, by Houston. It, it just remains to be seen, I think, mm -hmm. it'll be his call to make. Yeah, have you been impressed with him ever? I have, yeah. Kind of the time, over the period of time he's been at Celtic, but it's one of those things and it's managers come and go as well. We all yeah. see that, we know that in both sides of the game. So it's just down to the players, I think, as well, to keep pushing and try and maintain that kind of top top spot if they can and try and push on and get above Rangers and if that's what they want to do. But it's a tough one because if the manager leaves, then it's... It's down to them as players to remain as a collective and fight for it as well. So, Yeah, definitely. Well, before we finish then, we've been asking all our guests to come and join us on the show. If there's one thing you would like to see happen in the women's game to benefit the game, what would it be? Oh, um, maybe I asked you before. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think the way it is now, it's coming on leaps and bounds compared to if it was the way it was now when I was probably leaving school, then there was the opportunity to go and probably pursue it as a career. I'd probably say, I think it just all goes back to money, really, just a bit more money mm -hmm. into it. Um, not even in a large scale, just in general, in terms of whether it be sponsorships or yeah, a little bit more advertising, just to kind of promote it, because like we've said, the, the, especially the Premier League's a great advert for Scottish football, so mm -hmm. if you can kind of maintain that throughout the leagues, then... Yeah, it would be a really good place. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's our final show of 2023. Thanks to Ali. Thanks to Eva for joining us. We'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching. <laughs>